What do you understand about physical education? Are you a physically fit person? Physical education, or PE, is an integral part of the general education designed to promote the desired level of fitness through participation in well-selected activities. Physical fitness is the body's ability to function effectively and efficiently without undue fatigue in work, leisure activities, and to emergency situations. There are two components of physical fitness. The first component is the health-related fitness. Consists of components that have a relationship with good health or a lower risk of illness, particularly hypokinetic diseases. These are 1. Body composition refers to the proportion of lean body mass to fat body mass. 2. Flexibility is the ability of the joints and muscles to move through its full range of motion. 3. Cardiovascular endurance is the ability of the heart, lungs, and blood vessels to deliver oxygen to working muscles and tissues. 4. Muscular strength Ability of the muscles to exert maximal effort in a brief duration. 5. Muscular endurance Defined as the maximum pull or push that can be exerted one time by muscle group. The second is the skill-related fitness. These are components important for success in skillful activities and at next events composed of the following components. Agility the ability to rapidly and accurately change the direction of the whole body in space. Balance, the ability to maintain equilibrium while stationary or moving. Coordination, the ability to use the senses and the body parts in order to perform motor tasks smoothly and accurately. Power, the amount of force a muscle can exert. Reaction time, the ability to respond quickly to a stimuli. And last, speed, the amount of time it takes the body to perform a specific task. What do you think should be done to become a physically fit person? Make an exercise program. A planned activity detailing a range of physical activities and the amount of time it should be performed for individuals need. How to design an exercise program? To make a good exercise program, you need to consider the following. Set a goal or aim. Make it easy and use the SMART goal. S. Specific M. Measurable A. Achievable R. Relevant and T. Trackable Apply the principles of exercise training by giving considerations to the following. 1. Principle of overload. 2. Principle of progression. 3. Principle of specificity. 4. Principle of recovery. And 5. Principle of variation. Use the FIT formula to determine the correct amount of physical activity where F stands for frequency. How often should you perform this exercise each week? I. Intensity. How hard you should be working during this session. T. Type. What kind of exercises should you be doing? T. Time. How long in minutes should you perform this activity? Use this scorecard to record the results of your fitness test. Begin with the body composition. Be sure that you have a partner to help and guide you while doing the fitness test. To measure your height, you need a tape measure in centimeters placed on the wall and the ruler. It's time to measure your weight. You need a bathroom scale. Use kilograms. Record the result. The related component is the cardiovascular endurance. The activity you need to do is the 3 minute step test. You can use any similar step available in your area, but it should be 12 inches high. Before doing the test, locate your pulse, either on wrist or neck, and count for 60 seconds or 1 minute. Record the number of beats in the scorecard under before. 
repeat this procedure after performing the test and record the number of beats and thereafter. Do this continuously for 3 minutes. Again, after doing the 3 minute step, locate the pulse and count for 60 seconds or 1 minute and record the result under after. The next component is the strength. The activity you need to do is push up and this is the proper position for the girls. And the regular position of push up for the boys. Another activity to measure strength is the basic plank. Record the time you reach staying in this position. The flexibility. To measure this component, you need to do the zipper test. Measure the distance of the overlapping fingertips for the right arm up and for the left arm up. For the overlapping fingertips, indicate to the score the plus sign. If you fail to reach and there is a gap between the fingertips, measure the gap and indicate minus sign to the score. Another activity to measure the flexibility is the sit and reach. Record the distance in centimeters of the two triangles. For the performer, sit on the floor with back, head, and shoulders flat on the wall. Feet are 12 inches apart. Interlock thumbs and position the tip of the fingers on the floor without bending the elbows. Place the hands on top of the cardboard or paper where the tips of the middle fingers are at the top edge of the cardboard or paper. Start the test by pushing the cardboard or paper slowly and try to reach the farthest distance possible without bending the knees. Bouncing or jerking movement is not allowed. Do it twice. Our first activity in the skill-related fitness is juggling to measure the body's coordination. Record only the number of proper hits. Go! 1, 2, 3. The hexagon test will measure one's agility, the ability to move in different directions quickly. Record the time you complete the proper revolution. Add the time of the two revolution and divide by two to get the average score. This is the proper size of the hexagon. Former. Stand with both feet together inside the hexagon facing the marked starting side. At the signal go, using the ball of the feet with arms bent in front, jump clockwise over the line, then back over the same line inside the hexagon. Continue the pattern with all the sides of the hexagon. Rest for one minute. Repeat the test counterclockwise. The 40 meter sprint will measure your running speed. Record the time you reach the finish line at the distance of 40 meters. For the performer, at the signal ready, stand behind the takeoff line. The tips of the shoes should not go beyond the line and assume a crouch position. At the signal get set, assume an uncrouched position, buttocks up, with both hands on the starting line. At the signal go, run to the finish line as fast as you can. A standing long jump will measure the ability of the muscles to release a maximum force at a fast rate, specifically the leg power. Perform twice in succession and record the distance. The stork balance test will measure the ability of the body to stay in equilibrium. It can be static or dynamic. For the performer, remove the shoes and place hands on the hips. Position the right foot against the inside knee of the left foot. Raise the left heel to balance on the ball of the foot. Do the same procedure with the opposite foot. For the action time is the amount of time you respond to stimulus. Perform it with the stick wrap test. Chair and legs to the table so that the elbow and the lower arm rest on the desk table comfortably. Place the heel of the hand on the desk 
or table so that only the fingers and thumb extend beyond. Index finger and thumb should at least be one inch apart. Catch the ruler with the thumb and index finger without lifting the elbow from desk or table as the partner drops the stick. Hold the stick while the partner reads the measurement. Do this thrice. Excellent! Good job for your active participation.